morning, everyone. You have logged into the Healthy Aging Lecture. It's about 11 o'clock here East Coast time, and we will get started in just one two minutes. I want to give everybody a chance to jump on before we get into the uh, get into the content. So hold tight for one to two minutes, and we'll get get rolling. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the March Healthy Aging Lecture. My name is Kate Tutwape. I'm the manager of senior health here at Virginia Hospital Center. And today our topic is focused on your home. And we're going to be learning about some excellent home safety tips, repairs, maintenance, that type of thing to get your house in tip top shape, especially as we prepare for this nice uh, spring weather. So um, we're joined today by Don Ryan, who I'm going to introduce in just a moment. I want to first um, go over a few um, simple housekeeping tips um, to get us rolling, just in case you haven't been on one of our webinars before. Could you go to the next slide? Thank you, Don. So again, I want to just um, welcome everyone and uh, remind you that you have entered this webinar on um, uh, muted. That way we can keep the background noise down. But certainly that does not mean we don't want to hear from you. So please, um, I want to orient you to the question box that you should see on your screen. This is where you can type in your questions and we'll be sure to review them and um, Send them over to Don at the end of the presentation. So please um, definitely you know, get your thoughts ready and get them in the question box and, and we will get to those. Um, also, just so you know, the webinar is being recorded. So if you want to hear this information again or you would like to share it with somebody, you everybody will receive a link to the recording. Um, and then finally, just to orient you, if this control box is, is bothering you, if it's on your screen, you certainly can just press that orange arrow and collapse it um, so that it's not in your way as you're, as you're viewing the presentation. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of great pictures and uh, visuals to, to take in. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Don Ryan, who is the Director of Partnerships for Rebuilding Together, based in Arlington, Fairfax and Falls Church. Rebuilding Together is a nonprofit organization that makes health and safety repairs at no charge for homeowners with limited income. And over his career, Don has worked on different aspects of home health or healthy homes. Um, he has conducted many health and safety assessments and coordinated repairs and accessibility modifications for more than 250 homes in Northern Virginia. So at this point, Don, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and giving us the opportunity to learn from you and to uh, make our homes even better than they are. So I'm going to turn my camera off and let you take it away. Well, thank you, Kate. Um, pleasure to be here. And thanks, Virginia Hospital Center, for um, focusing on safe and healthy housing. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, three different bases today. First, uh, a bit of a crash course in Healthy Homes 101 uh, to give you a sense of the goals that we're striving to achieve um, and the evidence supporting these recommendations. Um, then I'll have a dozen tips, healthy home tips, that each of you can check your home um, and suggestions about 
uh, low cost repairs to, um, to make them safer. Some accessibility modifications and home repairs cost a lot of money, but I'm going to be focusing on the multiple opportunities for simple low cost repairs. My goal is for each of you to come out of this presentation with uh, an action list of steps uh, to make your own home safer and healthier. And then third, um, I'll cover a little bit about rebuilding together and how we help um, homeowners on limited income with accessibility modification and repairs and illustrations of uh, some of these. And I plan to highlight a number of technological advances in just the last couple of years that have made, uh, made things a lot easier for all of us. So I'm expecting lots of questions. Um, you can plug those into the question tab. Um, I will wait until the end to, uh, to get to those. Um, my presentation is content rich and fast paced. So, um, so please jot down um, items that you want to learn more about. So why are we worried, do we worry about healthy homes? Um, we are creatures of our environment and, and our exposure comes from where we spend time. Um, so um, risk in our homes directly affect our health. Um, these statistics, of course, were pre-COVID, so the numbers, uh, the amount of time we spend inside is even higher. Um, thousands of peer-reviewed studies have identified specific conditions um, in our homes that cause specific illness, injury, disease, and death. Um, they add billions of dollars to healthcare cost, um, and these studies show that older homes typically pose higher risk. Um, homes occupied by low-income families um, as well. Uh, and also significant risks that vary by um, both race and ethnicity. So some of the disparities in health that we worry about as a nation are directly due to uh, housing quality issues uh, in our homes. And then finally, I just want to point out, um, as we age, um, the challenges our homes pose um, vary as well. Um, best captured by one of our clients, uh, I'm aging just fine, but my house isn't keeping up. So the good news about safe and healthy housing is that most hazards are easy to identify um, by visual inspection, if you know what clues to look for. Um, and most repairs are relatively simple and low cost to make. Um, and we've got solid research that confirms the effectiveness of these repairs. These seven principles um, of healthy homes guide action to, um, um, to correct problems. Um, so we want to keep our homes dry, clean, well-ventilated, pest-free, safe, especially in terms of falls, uh, contaminant-free, and maintained. So keep it dry is principle number one because moisture is the root of many health hazards in our homes. Mold and mildew, dust mites, pests, uh, allergens, as well, of course, as uh, moisture causing structural damage um, to our homes. So any sign of moisture in our homes calls for um, um, focused uh, action to identify uh, the source of the moisture, the cause of the problem, to correct that, and then to correct the damage. Um, the definitive study comes from the Institute of Medicine um, that, um, that looked at these respiratory issues and found that for people who live in homes or kids that go to school in schools with uh, moisture and humidity problems, each of these respiratory issues are more than twice as, uh, as likely. The flip side of keeping it dry is keeping it ventilated. Again, very solid. Um, the definitive study came from Harvard, the 19 city study that found for all of these uh, respiratory issues um, about a double risk for uh, homes that are poorly ventilated. So um, the basics of building science underlie healthy homes, how air, heat, and moisture uh, move in homes. Um, I don't want to glaze your eyes over, but um, but air leaks um, are very important. We 
we, we want a barrier between our conditioned indoor space and outdoors and wall cavities and attics. So spot ventilation is very critical. Here we are talking about exhaust fans in kitchens and bathrooms. Um, the purpose isn't to control odor, but to remove moisture and reduce uh, humidity. Um, a very high number of uh, homes that we visit in Northern Virginia uh, have exhaust fans that aren't working. And there's an easy test here, the Charmin test. Uh, your fan should be pulling enough air to, um, to hold up a two-ply piece of uh, toilet paper. And if your bathroom doesn't have adequate ventilation, here's, here's what we can see, um, um, mold and moisture. Uh, here's an example where the building code hasn't kept up with, uh, with the science. Until very recently, the building code required exhaust fans in bathrooms unless there was a, a window that opened. Um, that sort of overlooks the reality that we rarely open bathroom windows. So spot ventilation, exhaust fans in bathrooms are important. Asthma is another um, big ticket item. Um, and once again, uh, solid science has confirmed these six uh, housing factors that are um, asthma, asthma triggers. In terms of contamination, uh, we'll start with carbon monoxide, which can kill. Carbon monoxide comes from um, um, combustion appliances, furnaces, water heaters, um, uh, mostly in Northern Virginia, fueled by natural gas. Um, most of our appliances are what's called atmospherically vented, which means the only thing that's carrying this poison gas out of our home is the phenomena of heat rising. So any break in a flu or cracks in a flu um, can pose um, uh, real dangers in terms of uh, carbon monoxide exposure. The photo in the bottom right is a good reminder um, that the one place we should never use duct tape is on heating ducts. A uh, little terminology problem there. Um, and then focusing on the photo, the top of the water heater there, much more frequently we find signs of backdrafting, um, that the, the flu gases for some reason are not clearing out of the house. Um, they're backdrafting and leaving signs of moisture um, or rust uh, on, top of the, uh, on top of the water heater. This can be caused by a bird's nest in the flu um, or a dead squirrel. Uh, I had each of these in my um, first house in Arlington. A question for you to think about your home and what is the major source of, um, of allergens. Um, scientific studies show that old carpeting, ratty old carpeting, just has a multitude of um, nasty um, agents that can uh, are all respiratory uh, and, and other contaminants. So especially if you have any kind of breathing issue, COPT, um, asthma, other respiratory problems, um, paying attention to allergens and old carpeting is important. Uh, our goal is to keep it pest free for two reasons. Uh, pests themselves cause health hazards, um, especially such as uh, cockroaches uh, um, and asthma. Uh, but more importantly, the pesticides that we use and misuse pose um, serious health hazards, um, both acute and, uh, and chronic. Um, but pesticide exposure um, causes cancer, liver, kidney, central nervous system issues. Many of us buy organic food so as to avoid pesticide exposure, but studies show that pesticide, most of us are exposed to much higher pesticide levels in our homes than through our food. Um, the old days of the exterminator coming and spraying baseboards uh, once a month, um, um, that is uh, passe. Um, integrated pest management is now the, uh, um, the byword, and it's uh, intended to deny 
pets, um, the food, water, and harborage that they need, um, and then to apply any chemicals um, um, carefully um, using the least amount of the least toxic agent um, in the least dispersive way possible. So baits and traps are far superior than, than widespread spraying. And an example of that, the worst thing you can do, something I did in my own home 30 years ago, um, is the, the fogger, um, the aerosol can that stands vertically, you push the trigger and run out of the room, and it uh, um, runs them, it's bad at killing bugs, it runs them into the baseboard, um, but it leaves a film of, uh, of, of pesticide toxicity on, carpeting, furniture, clothing, um, everything. So injuries are a major uh, concern, uh, especially given that one in three seniors uh, in the US takes a fall each year, um, triggering lots of uh, emergency room visits, hospitalizations, uh, medical cost. Very significant that 95% of hip fractures are due to a fall, and we all know that a hip fracture can often be the beginning of the end. Um, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons tells us most falls occur in the home and most are known are due to known hazards. So shifting gears here, um, I'd like to offer a dozen healthy home tips. Um, I hope each of you will be considering what um, what what's the priorities action steps uh, in your in your own home. So number one, we're going to start with the clothes dryer um, to make sure that it is vented properly outside. Clothes dryers are the leading cause of fire in home, uh, a major moisture problem, um, and the issue is uh, is lint clogs that uh, are very common. So an easy way to check, turn your clothes dryer on uh, and then go outside and, and check the flapper uh, where it is exhausting and just making sure that you have a, a strong airflow. Uh, to emphasize the point here of the homes we visit in Northern Virginia, one third um, have hazardous clothes dryer ducts. Uh, most of our, the terminus on, on most of our dryers is uh, the, showing the photo on the left, a plastic flapper. Um, the little louvered flappers are actually missing from this one, but that's not a problem because no air is getting outside in any event due to the, the clog. So we need um, a, a flapper um, to keep out birds, to keep out pests, but at the same time um, that avoids uh, lint clogs. So we want to recommend the superior, the pr premium dryer vent flapper. Um, you have to buy this online. You can't get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Also pay attention to the material that your dryer duct is made of. And in particular, if you have flimsy white uh, accordion duct um, shown uh, on the left there is number one. That really is bad news. You should make this a priority to upgrade your dryer duct. And uh, the best solution is uh, rigid metal uh, pipe number two there. Uh, healthy home tip number two is to um, to check that your gutters and downspouts are, are doing their job. Um, and here we want to wait for a rainy day, take your umbrella and go outside and walk around your home and check to see how your gutters and downspouts are, are doing. Is water spilling over the edge of your gutter? Uh, is your downspout clogged up? Um, or is water puddling uh, around the foundation? Often around foundations, we, we find negative slope. Uh, the ground is sloping towards the home. Um, so we're supposed to have uh, one half inch per foot, um, ideally for four to six feet of grading away from the home. Different options in terms of carrying water away from the home. On the right, uh, a splash block um, <clears throat> gets water moving in the right direction for a few feet. 
Um, on the left, black landscaping pipe um, on, on top of the of grade above ground um, can carry water away. But you might consider the superior um, solution, um, a um, burying drainage pipe underground and then using this kind of pop-up emitter. Um, again, very low, low cost. Um, you can mow right over it and this gets water safely um, away from, from the foundation. Healthy home tip number three, to make sure your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors uh, are working. First, many homes don't have carbon monoxide detectors. If you have any gas appliance or an attached garage, you need a carbon monoxide detector on every level of your home. Um, here's an example of a technological advance. Um, um, we now have uh, both smoke and CO detectors um, that have 10-year uh, lithium-ion uh, batteries. So we can avoid the drill of climbing up on a chair or ladder whenever the time changes twice a year to change the batteries. Um, so a great technological advance. Just a heads up, if you live in a home that was built with hardwired smoke detectors, these came in about 20, 25 years ago, uh, it's important to note, and, and is really not widely understood, that these need to be replaced every 10 years, not because of the battery, but because of uh, oxidation on, on the sensor. It loses its sensitivity to smoke. Um, so a relatively low cost repair that any handyman can do. Healthy home tip number four, um, to, to have a fire extinguisher um, in your kitchen, um, at, at the very least, um, in a place that's uh, obvious and, and easy to get. They have a way of working themselves to the back corners uh, under our kitchen sink, which defeats uh, the whole purpose. <clears throat> Healthy home tip number five, is um, to pay attention to your stairs, to make sure they're safe. Uh, double stair rails can make a huge difference. Um, make sure your stair treads are secure. If anyone in the home has a vision problem, contrast edge strips can make uh, uh, a real difference. And then to make sure your, hair, your stairs are free of, uh, of, of anything uh, that cause, cause a trip. Uh, a reminder here that small rugs, um, throw rugs, can are a major cause of falls. And once again, a very easy fix, uh, a no-slip pad available from your hardware store um, can stabilize that rug. Healthy home tip number six is to brighten lighting in our homes. And this is an arresting statistic. Uh, we need twice as much light at age 65 to see as well as we did at age 20. So most of us would be well served by brightening lighting in our home. And here, tremendous advances in just the last year or two um, in LED solid state fixtures that have no bulbs whatsoever to change. Um, these are relatively stylish, um, incredibly energy efficient, they're inexpensive, um, the, the flush mount fixture shown appropriate for a bedroom or kitchen uh, is $30. And a, a real advance in technology is these now have soft, warm light. Um, the first generation had a very bright, um, bright light. So this is something of a personal, um, personal preference. Um, these new fixtures have three different settings for the color of the light. Um, but if you want a soft, warm light, sort of more closer to the old incandescent bulb, uh, you want to be at the low end of the Kelvin range, 2,700 to 3,000. Healthy home tip number seven, change that furnace filter at least every two to three months. And once again, if you have respiratory issues, uh, all the more important. Um, and to select a filter, a higher quality filter, um, the quality and, and price is based on the size of particles that your filter captures. Um, take a look at the photo on the right. Um, what's wrong with this picture? Um, the 
the slot that the, the filter goes in is open. So air is bypassing uh, the filter and defeating the whole, the whole purpose. So a very cheap and easy solution that anyone can do is filter lock available online. Um, but two plastic sleeves with uh, with magnet strips that uh, that can can make that filter slot airtight. Uh, our next healthy home tip is to set back your water uh, your water heater temperature. Um, if your water uh, hot water is hotter than it needs to be, stop wasting energy and reduce the risk of scalding. Tip number nine is to check your attic hatch for air leach air leaks. Um, the energy experts tell us this is the number one um, hot air waster in most homes. Um, the photo at the right is probably costing uh, at least $100 a year in, uh, in heating bills. In most cases, uh, narrow, um, narrow weather stripping, a narrow um, um, foam rubber strip is, the, is a good solution. If your attic stairs are, are really hung crookedly, uh, you may need an attic insulation tent, um, but that's uh, available at Home Depot or Lowe's for about 60 bucks. Healthy home tip number 10, seal gaps, cracks, and holes in foundation and siding, um, especially. Um, so what do we do here uh, on a sunny day? Take a walk all the way around your home, looking very um, carefully at where wires, cables, and pipes enter your home um, and make sure we have a, um, uh, there's no openings there to reduce moisture, keep out pests, uh, and save energy due to air leaks. And once again, the tools of the trade are simple and low cost. Uh, the copper mesh shown there is, um, uh, is a solution rats and mice can eat through uh, caulk. Um, so if it's a larger hole, to stuff it with copper mesh first and, and then caulk. Healthy home tip number 11, uh, keep ivy, shrubs, and debris away from your home. I don't know how ivy came, ivy covered came to have such a good uh, connotation, but um, it's a moisture problem, an invitation to pest. Um, ideally, our shrub should be four to six inches away from um, the, the foundation or siding. And healthy home tip number 12 um, comes uh, at the request of uh, emergency responders to make sure that your house numbers are clearly visible from the street. And again, a very low cost, uh, a low cost fix. So a couple bonus recommendations here, um, a little bit higher cost um, um, repairs or investments, but um, if you have that nasty old carpeting and you know what I'm talking about, um, it should be replaced um, and ideally not with new carpeting, but with a smooth and cleanable alternative, uh, hardwood flooring, laminate um, or, or tile. Another upgrade, another investment suggestion is gutters and downspouts. And again, depending on how yours are working, but many older homes in Arlington built in you know, the 40s, 50s, 60s uh, had uh, tiny gutters that really are undersized. So uh, I just want to point out uh, the downspouts, uh, the two inch by three inch downspout carries half as much um, water as is the next size up, the three inch by four inch. So uh, a good opportunity for a relatively low cost upgrade. So there have been lots of, of opportunities that I haven't covered here, but I want to recommend this tremendous guide um, developed by AARP that covers a constellation of issues, uh, lever door handles, uh, cabinet pulls, task lighting, um, other ways to make our homes uh, friendlier um, for aging in place. And I believe this is available to AARP members at no cost um, on AARP's website. So now I'd like to um, talk a little bit about rebuilding together Arlington Fairfax Falls Church um, and um, the repairs and accessibility modifications we make for, um, for low-income homeowners. 
Um, we are one of 120 affiliates and communities around the country. We serve Arlington and Fairfax County. We've been around 31 years um, and um, rely mostly on volunteers to make homes safe and healthy. Uh, we serve um, homeowners um, um, who are on limited incomes, um, the vast majority who live in their own homes and intend to stay there. The vast majority are seniors. Um, most have someone in the home with a disability. I should note that Rebuilding Together also helps other nonprofits with improvements and repairs and upgrades to their facilities. Uh, our homeowners need to live in their home um, um, and uh, need to fill out an application, document their income. Uh, those are the income caps for Arlington, uh, Fairfax County, they're, they're slightly lower. Um, rebuilding Together has no asset test, so if uh, someone has paid off their home, owns it free and clear, that's not held against them. Um, we are a small organization, three full-time, two part-time employees. We repair about 100 homes a year, um, so our magic comes from partnerships with um, small businesses, national corporations, faith-based groups. Uh, and we rely um, primarily on volunteers. As you can tell from this presentation, we take um, safe and healthy housing seriously, a comprehensive assessment of each home, a detailed statement of work. We take care to use the right methods and materials, and we track our results with uh, consistent metrics. Um, due to COVID, um, the last two years, we've had to cancel our signature event, National Rebuilding Day, the last weekend in April. Um, but historically, 25 to 30 uh, organizations, faith-based groups, small businesses, national corporations, each adopt a home. And with um, some hand-holding and help from Rebuilding Together, um, um, they carry out repairs with, team, with larger teams of volunteers. But um, even through COVID, um, Rebuilding Together is, uh, is now working again with small teams of skilled uh, volunteers. And more than half of our year-round projects are what we call Rebuilding Together Express. They focus on helping seniors age in place. And in a nutshell, four or five skilled volunteers work four or five hours, and typically we spend four to 500 on materials. Uh, we were very uh, happy to win the uh, Virginia Commonwealth Council on Aging's uh, Best Practices Award in, uh, in 2018. So um, RT Express focuses on many of the repairs that I talked about earlier, fall safety, fire safety, moisture ventilation, uh, security, and then low-hanging fruit on energy, uh, energy efficiency. Fall safety is our top priority, and these are our most frequent uh, repairs and modifications, um, grab, grab bars, comfort high toilets, um, lighting, et cetera. Um, if you have an old munchkin toilet, we call them, um, 13, 14 inches, um, um, the top of the porcelain off the floor, uh, you'd be well served by moving to a comfort height toilet. We call that upgrade comfort height, but in fact, just about all new toilets are now 16 and a half inches um, um, top of the porcelain off the floor and makes a huge difference uh, to old knees and hips. Um, double stair rails are, um, are, are uh, another uh, frequent repair um, and we get um, stronger feedback from our homeowners about these than, than any other. We've developed a new specialty in stair lifts, um, units that are donated to Rebuilding Together, um, which we then install at no charge for our um, um, low-income homeowners. Uh, we can only handle these on straight stairways, but um, this can be life-changing for someone who, one, one client had been six months since they'd been upstairs for, um, to their only bathroom for a shower. In many cases, the front door uh, poses a hurdle. So a half step is a, uh, is a low cost solution to reduce the riser height, um, either through this kind of a um, plastic uh, 
um, model bought online, or an opportunity to build a larger, custom build a larger um, platform, sort of a, more of an architectural detail that, um, um, that serves that purpose. And then finally, we, um, we build lots of wheelchair ramps, um, which again can be, um, can be life-saving to, uh, life-changing um, to, um, to help people uh, get out of their home for doctor's appointments, et cetera. Rebuilding Together takes COVID um, very seriously. We were shut down for uh, three months and then developed a set of worksite um, safety protocols. Um, we wear masks all the time. Um, we social distance with our homeowners. We contact trace. Um, we take temperatures. So um, we've been very lucky to be able to maintain momentum with our small teams. We limit teams to a maximum of four uh, inside the home. So that wraps, uh, wraps up my presentation, just to, um, to, to point out several uh, opportunities. Uh, number one, to follow up on your to-do list, to check your own home. Um, number two, uh, if you own your home and you be, meet uh, the income caps, I want to urge you to uh, apply to Rebuilding Together um, for help. Or um, I want to urge you to think hard about a friend or neighbor or relative who could use our help, or for that matter, um, another nonprofit organization whose facilities um, need repair. Uh, an opportunity to partner with Rebuilding Together if you own your own small business, if you work for a national corporation, um, if you're part of a, a civic or faith-based organization. And then finally, um, opportunities for individuals to uh, support Rebuilding Together. If you've got skills and tools and time, um, our volunteers get a tremendous kick out of uh, solving problems. Um, or you can write a check to uh, help support our work and sponsor a project. Um, I just want to reinforce some homeowners are a little reluctant to, um, to apply for our charity. Um, rebuilding Together is not charity, it is neighbors helping neighbors, and um, we invite our volunteers to, um, to make a contribution at the end of a project to, uh, to pay it forward. So uh, here's uh, our organization's contact, um, as well as my um, email and, uh, and phone number. Um, so thank you for helping spread the word to those who can uh, use help with um, accessibility modifications and critical home repairs. And now um, I'll turn back to Kate, um, and Kate can tee up questions that uh, that you all have uh, have submitted. Very good. Thank you so much, Don. That was uh, tremendously uh, helpful. I know I jotted down a few of my own notes to take back home, and I just really appreciate hearing about the wonderful service um, and expertise that your organization brings to the community. So thank you very much for that. And yes, indeed, we do have um, several questions that have come in. And again, I just want to remind folks, look, at, look for your question box if you have something that's come to mind, and you can um, type those in and we'll, we'll get to them. So Don, um, we actually have a few audience members that wanted to go back to the topic of, of pesticide use. And in particular, they wanna know if it's okay or what are your thoughts about using pesticide outside the home um, for spring um, and, and maybe comment on the frequency it, it, that would be appropriate for that. Um, you know, we have one person that does a quarterly spring and they're wondering if that's okay. Um, again, it's for like ants and other types of pests exterior. Well, spraying outside the home is certainly better than spraying inside the home. Um, at, at the same time, um, I, I would sort of reinforce the principles of integrated press, uh, pest management. Um, so it kind of raises the question of, um, of what you're spraying for. Um, um, many homes in Arlington have problems with ants, um, so um, so the, the the traps and the um, taro t e r r o has a little liquid uh, that you put on a one square inch piece of paper, a little one drop tab on that. Um, 
and ants then take that poison back to the nest and it wipes out the whole nest. So it's a different concept than just sort of widespread um, spraying. So um, I would urge um, research on integrated pest management um, to, to zero in on whatever particular pest are of concern um, because there's very good um, strategies uh, and advice available online. That's great. Thank you, Don. In fact, you touched on a, um, another question that someone specifically was asking about ants and <laughs> keeping them out of the home. I, I believe the tarot um, cards or things that you referred to, those can be used for externally and internally, or what, you, what are your thoughts on that to help with the ant issue specifically? Um, so tarot can be used either outside or inside. Um, outside is the first line of defense. So, um, okay. So in many cases, um, baseboards along porches or whatever, you'll you'll find little little piles of dust, little signs of um, of ants or or other pest. Um, so a good 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 spot to target outside. And then tarot can also be used in this um, non-dispersive way inside. Um, just taking care to leave the little one-inch paper tabs with the one drop of uh, of, of agent, um, you know, in out of the way uh, places. Okay, great. Oh, yes, away from from any young people and and pets. <laughs> so. Exactly. Uh, um, pets, uh, dogs in particular, can be attracted to um, to some of these things. So it once again, it's important to. Uh, uh, strategically um, deploy them. Very good. Okay, switching gears a little bit. Um, we had a question about carpets. Any thoughts on how um, frequently they should be replaced? Is that um, anything? Any tail? Anything to look for? I guess in making that judgment call. Um. So. Um, so uh, there's. The only rule of thumb for carpeting is in commercial applications. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's every five to seven years. Um, there's not a set recommendation for uh, the home environment. Um, but again, the healthy home recommendation would be not to replace carpeting with carpeting, but to get rid of that reservoir. Um, for toxics and replace it with a smooth and cleanable surface. Okay, great. Um, dryer ducts, how, how about cleaning those? Are those something that should be done annually or how frequently? And um, the question is, does it need, does it require a professional to do it or could someone do it on their own at their house? Um, so, great question. Um, this all depends on, on the particulars of the situation. Um, the ultimate test of the clothes dryer is whether it's working and, and you have a strong airflow through the vent outside without um, any sign of a lint cloth. Um, if you've got that, um, there's no need for regular maintenance. Um, We've run into a couple condo um, um, apartments in, in um, Fairfax County where the, the, there's a apartment-wide requirement for someone to hire a um, contractor to clean the ducts every year. Um, I think that must be the brother-in-law of the owner of the, the, the building. Um, it's um, there's no need for that. Um, if you if if your duct is working fine, um, you're in good shape. And again, pay attention to the materials, uh, to the to the length of the run, to the number of elbows. Um, but if you have a, a short run with the right materials, um, you shouldn't need. Um, you, you should only rely on checking to make sure it's working. Okay, sounds good. Another question here from someone, um, for those who don't meet the income limits, do you have any recommendations for businesses that provide reasonable cost and good quality home repairs? Or um, So, fortunately, um, Rebuilding Together is 
not able to offer specific recommendations for um, for contractors. Um, I guess the, the advice is to, to rely on Angie's List or Consumer Checkbook, um, word of mouth recommendations from, from your neighbors. Um, most of the um, repairs and modifications that I um, covered today, you know, can be done by um, by, by a good handyman with uh, with good good skills. So I think word of mouth is probably the the most reliable way to find somebody somebody That's good. Great. Okay, I know uh, the next door app is often very helpful for that type of thing as well. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, back to, to pest control a little bit. Have you ever had to deal with um, bats or rodents in an attic situation and how is that best managed? Um, yes. Um, so, um, so let me note that um, uh, it's possible to have um, terrible infestation of um, of bats, um, birds, uh, okay. squirrels, raccoons, um, and all of these things, uh, their droppings can pose um, serious health hazards. Um, so the first line of defense is, is to, again, that visual inspection, I should have included this on my checklist, but um, looking for any sign of, um, uh, of of an opening that would provide access um, to these kind of pests. Um, if you have a significant infiltration of, of such pests, um, you probably need to turn to a pro, um, an animal control specialist. And in some cases, if, if um, you had a home that had hundreds of birds um, um, in the attic, and that required um, not our volunteers, but a specialized contractor in moon suits going in to uh, with, with uh, negative air and respiration to um, uh, to clean out the attic, to remove the insulation, and basically start fresh. So that can be um, very serious, very expensive problem. Okay, we we hope to avoid that. Um, actually, related to that to that question, um, a follow up: Do you recommend building a bat house on property? Would that be a strategy to help uh, minimize in them coming in indoors? So, um, interesting question. Something I've never encountered before. Um, so I'm I'm not going to hazard a guess at the right answer there. Um, um, Probably the internet. Um, Cornell University um, specializes in research on integrated pest management, so Cornell would be one one good place to check for that kind of a question. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. Um, in throughout your presentation, you did have some great uh, checklists and tips. Are any of those just available? As a, you know, as a perhaps in a handout format, or you know, some if somebody wanted to kind of go through your checklist, is there a, I could potentially send it out to folks if that would be something that's an option. Um, so I haven't translated this presentation to a checklist. Um, okay. My old organization, the National Center for Healthy Housing, um, does have a seasonal checklist for for maintenance. Um, so I'll be able to uh, be happy to share a link um, to that checklist, which is um, uh, it's about I don't know two or three pages long, fairly detailed, but it's got some good suggestions of what to check for uh, at different seasons. That sounds great. Yes, feel free to send that to me, and I can get it out to our audience um, along with the. The link, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, so folks can review this uh, this content-rich presentation again if they have any questions. So I'm going to give it a minute to see if there's any other questions that folks want to submit. At this time, we've worked through the ones that we had, so that's wonderful. Um, and while I am waiting to see if there's any other questions, I'm just going to give folks a teaser for April. Um, we have another um, presentation, Healthy Aging Lecture presentation on senior villages. 
Um, we're going to have the executive directors from the three local villages come on to talk to you about what a village is, what does it mean to be part of a village, what's the value. So I think it'll be very informative. This is a great resource if you're somebody that's looking for some assistance, um, perhaps with transportation, meals, or even just some social and recreational outlets. So I encourage you to join us on April 23rd for that, um, that discussion um, at 11 a.m. So, um, Don, we did get some uh, feedback to just say thank you so much. Um, folks are really um, enjoying what you had to share. Let me and offer let yep. me offer one parting shot, um, mm -hmm. and that's uh, about resistance to grab bars. Um, we had uh, a client a couple weeks ago. Um, we were making our pitch as to how grab bars could provide stability, stepping in and out of the shower, make her safer. And she thought about it and said, yes, um, I, I really think I do want to get them, but I'm going to wait till I'm older. She was 93. Um, waiting until you fall is not the right time to get a grab bar. Um, there is no stigma around grab bars. Uh, new homes are now being built with universal design standards, so they work for everyone. Um, so the, the grab bars we install are pretty basic, but they're um, stainless steel. Um, the, the, the flanges on each end ha have nice covers. Um, and if you want to, you can spend hundreds of dollars on sort of designer grab bars that don't even look like grab bars. Um, but these do prevent falls, the science shows, and um, none of us should be shy about um, outfitting our, our bathrooms in particular for, uh, for safety. That's such great advice. I think for anyone at any age, uh, we need to be safe in the shower and around the water and all of that. So I uh, definitely hope people take that into consideration. So again, Don, we're getting lots more positive feedback to say thank you for this very helpful presentation. The audience members um, appreciated what you had to share. And um, if folks have questions that come to mind later, you're welcome to you know, contact me directly or, or Don, I'm sure we're willing to take questions as well. Um, we're available to you even after this presentation if something comes to mind. Great. So, thanks, yeah, Kate. Don, yeah, I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank our audience for joining us today on this beautiful Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I hope you will see many of you um, back with us next month for our next lecture. So at this time, I'm going to conclude the webinar and um, sign off. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe.